Nat slip streaming is a new attack discovered by Sami Kamkar, and I want to illustrate it in as short as possible in this video. So if you're interested to learn about that attack, stay tuned. So I'm going to summarize what I'm going to do and then show you graphics and all that jazz. So the goal of this attack is we have a victim and, and he or she is running a precious private service that we want access to. But if that victim is behind LAN, NAT, a LAN and a NAT, so there's imp it's impossible to access, right? And so let's say it's running on 8080 and that's what I want to access as an attacker. How? Maybe it's a Jenkins server. Maybe it's an email server. I don't know. That's the goal of NAT streaming, and that's uh, NAT slip streaming. So the steps are this victim will visit the attacker web server. So it will be a URL that's running a web server on the attacker, and uh, that downloads an HTML page. Not fancy, right? Nothing fancy so far. So that's legitimate. Uh, just a click of a link, you download the index.html. That makes that page makes a special post request using JavaScript because that's what runs in the browser. And that post request contains a body that contains something called a SIP message, right? It has a lot of stuff, but it was a very well crafted post message that has a lot of body, and part of it contains a SIP register message. And I'm going to talk about what that means. But what that means is it's a special protocol called the session initiation protocol to allow a uh, voice over IP and other stuff as well. And that special message instructs the router to open any port on the network on that machine. So you might say, does the router just randomly opens port? No. That message is special. We're going to see how the trick is done in a minute. And then finally, attacker will access the victim service on the open port that the router just opened. Let's just jump into it. So here's my beautiful victim. And he is in running on a port. Uh, 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 there is an IP address, 10.0.0.2. So it's behind a NAT. And it's running a service code uh, on on, on port 8080, so maybe it's a Jenkins server or anything like that, right? It's behind router, so that's the gateway in 001, and there is, the router has a public IP address, 9.8.7.6. And this is the attacker HTTP web server, and it's running on port 5060. It's very critical that it has to be 5060. Otherwise, this whole thing doesn't work. You might say, Hussein, why 5060? Because 5060 is actually the SIP uh, protocol port. And it has a special semantic in the router. And if it sees that with a SIP message, it actually activates something called the ALG, which is the application layer gateway, which, which actually does the opening of the port, ironically. How about we jump into it? So the victim will visit that page, that just normal link, right? And then makes a request to the router. And we're going to review how it happens in NAT here, guys. So if I make a request, what does this require? So it's a GET request, right? The target is 12.3.4 and on port 5060. And the source is 10.0.0.2 on this port, random port 7641. That goes to the router. The router will create a NAT entry and start mapping this internal port, this internal IP, to an external port, an external uh, IP that is assigned by the router. So 9876 and create a random port 6543. It could be the same port. Who knows? Who cares? And now this is the new packet now. Because we cannot send that naked packet to the internet because 10.0.0.2 means nothing of the internet. So we have to do a NAT translation to work at this translation. I talked about NAT, guys. Check out the video. So now the router just sends this, this packet to the uh, web server, the attacker, and then the attacker will receive that and say, okay, let me serve you this special index.html that contains this... Uh, malicious uh, attack so it's the index html so now the attacker will respond back with 200 okay but now what does the what is this destination the destination is the port that comes back so 6543 and this is the public ip address of the router and sends back the information says okay 200 okay here is my index html page the router looks at it looks at the table says okay six nine eight seven six six five four three oh that maps to this internal IP. Let me swizzle that in the packet and then just send it to the right user. So far, nothing is wrong with this. This is a legitimate request. But we're going to peek into what's going on there. 
When we peek into that, it's an index to HTML that sends a post request. So that victim gets back the malicious HTML page, and that HTML page has a JavaScript that immediately submits on load, and it sends a post request to this IP address. HTTP one two three four five sixty, and this is how the post request looks like. It's a it's a it's a sim, uh, it's a simplification, but the idea here is I'm going to send a post request. I'm going to send a random body da, 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 so that I can if and that's the trick and that's what Sammy explains. If I can neatly build this post request so that it splits nicely into a single MTU TCP packet. So that the whole thing up to here becomes one TCP packet and the second TCP packet, because it's too large, now we have to split it. We split into another packet. That's the trick. So now my post request becomes two TCP packets. So now that's how HTML or HTTP works, right? I'm sending the HTTP request. I'm going to break it into two TCP packets. I'm going to send TCP packet number one and then two and that formulate my request. Now, I'm going to refer to this as the green packet, which is good, and then I refer to this as the red packet, right, from now on, right? And look at this. It says, reg register SIP contact 002.10.0002.8080. So that's the service I want to access. That's the, that's, the attack, that's the victim service. That's the Jenkins server. All right? So we'll, we'll go through the... The, the green one, which is now this is the actual post request, which goes through the same exact process, do, does the NAT and all that stuff. But I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the second TCP packet, which is the red one. I take that TCP packet. I send it, right? This is part of the post request. But look at this. This post request, this part of the post request has nothing but that beautiful message. So that author looks at it and says, whoa, 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 wait a second. I can't just let, let this go. This is a special thing. The router has something. Most router has something called ALG, which is Application Layer Gateway. And it's a, it's a, it's, it's a software that inspects the packet and says, wait a second, 5060, I know this port. That's, a, that's the SIP protocol port. Let me actually inspect this. If it inspects the packet and says, Oh, register SIP, contact on 008080. Oh, the client wants to open a, a SIP connection. Let me just follow the instruction of the client because to, to the router, the client just made this request, not the attacker. Right? That's the trick here. The combination of this plus this will instruct the router, again, only if ALG for SIP is enabled, to open port uh, 8080 for 10.0.0.2 and adds a new NAT entry so that it allows external access on port 8080. And nobody asked for that. It was just a malicious JavaScript post request. This attack is genius, dude. This is genius. All right. So this is how the net table how it looks like. Uh, now we have a new entry, 10.0.0.2.80.80. And this is the external IP. And this is same port, maybe some other port. And then, I said, we have a new entry. Now, the next step is that the attacker just access the service. What does it do? The attacker sends a git request because it knows somehow this is a, a, a HTTP server, which is the Jenkins job running on 80.80. It sends it to port 9.8.7.6 on port 8080 that's the destination and then it's source it's the same port and ip and it sends it and it says wait a second what is this 9876 you want to go there oh i do have an entry let me translate that sir for you to 10.0.0.2.8080 let me swizzle that and then let's just poof, send it to the victim and that's how it works so guys to 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 enable this attack, first of all, there's a lot of work. And, and I encourage you to read Sammy's uh, article that he details a lot of stuff. Because first of all, how, 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 how would you as a JavaScript app, in this case, know the IP address of the host? 
you're running onto. Usually this information is not accessible to you. So that's a challenge. He runs into a challenge. So like, okay, I'm going to get into this, 10002. And the second challenge is like, how do you know the public IP address of the router? That's the second challenge, right? So there are a lot of challenges that he actually breaks down and, and to go to that. And I, uh, the first video I made, uh, actually commentating on the article and just discussing it. It was a very long video, so I wanted to make a little bit short video to explain this attack. All right, over, all right guys, so by the way, uh, as of today, Chrome and Firefox physically block any HTTP request to 5060 because of Sammy, because of this attack, because they cannot do anything. The, 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 this thing is just, let's protect the browser because we cannot protect all routers. We cannot let users, hey, go to your router admin and change disable ALG on SIP. Who knows how to do that? Most users don't. So the browser is now disabled port 5060. And uh, it's going to be, in, uh, I made a video about it. Actually, it happened in the beta 87 Chrome. If you make any request to port 5060, even if it's a legitimate listening port, even locally in your development server, I don't know, you're running some Visual, Visual Studio code, you can't. They disabled that. It's an unsafe port anymore. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more news and more uh, interesting topics like that. I love this stuff. And good job, Sammy.